let's bow down our heads as we pray. Lord, we thank you this morning. We are grateful for your mercy, for your goodness. Lord, we thank you again for what you did in the conference and in the anniversary. Lord, be glorified in the name of Jesus. I pray this morning, let your work come with power. Let your work come with understanding in the name of Jesus. Speak to every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you humble me to be able to give your word as it is in the name of Jesus. And let me not just be a preacher of your word. Let me be a doer of your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Matthew chapter 13. I'm talking again today on walking in view of his coming. This is part two. Walking in view of his coming. Please don't forget this Friday is our night of glory. That's a night of prayer. Many of us have not been coming for this. Um, please find time to be coming for night of glory this Friday. These are the period that we have to be able to pray extensively. And our team, I don't know, the, the media, you can, maybe after this, you can help me put the flyer on it so that people can see. And even for the elders too. But you can put for the night of glory. Our team is overcomers. Overcomers, overcomers. So whatever that has been defeating you, you will receive power to overcome in the name of Jesus. You will no longer be defeated in the name of Jesus. Maybe there's some situation in your life, sickness, there's some disease, there's some experience. Come and come and pray. And I have one of my friends that is coming also to minister together with me, uh, Pastor Adeleke. And, um, and I know that Lord will do a great thing in that meeting in Jesus' name. It's been a long time that we have him. And I know that um, God will use him in Jesus' name. Uh, walking in view of his coming, the first part of this message I began to tell her that, I, you know, the Bible said that Enoch pleased the Lord. And uh, Enoch walked with God, and he was not. As we are planning, we are, we are preparing for rapture. And he had a testimony before his departure. The testimony is that he pleased the Lord. Hebrews 11, verse, six, verse 5 and 6. He pleased the Lord. No matter the testimony you show, you will have. No matter how strong, no matter how great that testimony is, if your testimony is not, or uh, the, the testimony you have does not include pleasing God, that testimony will become zero. The only thing that makes your testimony to stand is because you please the Lord. Because if at the end of the day, you have great testimony. Maybe you've been looking for children, you have a child. You've been looking for a job, you have a job. You've been looking for opportunity to get your document, you get the document. You have all those wonderful testimonies. You are sick, you have been praying, God deliver me. And God heals you. And you come here to share the testimony. God, uh, God deliver you from terrible accidents. Those are good and great testimonies. But if you do not have a testimony that you please the Lord, you will not go with him. And if you do not go with him, what, where will you share all those testimonies? Where will you be able to talk? What will be the relevance and the importance of those testimonies? And that's why we are talking about walking in view of his coming. So, and the first thing, the primary thing, way to walk in view of his coming is to walk to please him. Not to walk to please men. It's very easy to please men. It's very, very, men can easily push us. It's only when you have, not, you have not come to any point or any place of leadership that you'll be thinking that men are nothing. No! When you come to any level of leadership and you are leading men, you are leading people, it's not animal, you will definitely be pushed to want to please men. You will always come into that temptation anytime you are leading. And all of us, we are leaders. We are leaders at one level or the other. As a mother, you are leaders. You are leading your children. As a father, you are leading. You are leading your family. You are leading your children. So at any point, you are a leader at one point or the other. And so you have people that you have to guide. And there is temptation that will come so that you want to please them. But you have to know that is it the people that you want to please or is it God? In 2 Samuel, the Bible talks about, uh, I think it was 1 Samuel, about Saul. 
God has solved first chapter 13, chapter 15. He asked him and said, go and kill all the Amalekites. And Samuel told him, wait for me for seven days before you go and do this. And Samuel waited one day, waited two days, waited three days, waited four days, waited five days, waited the seventh day. But before the end of seven days, the man of God delayed. He did not come on time. And people were pushing him. His people were pushing him. What is wrong with you? Don't you? Are you not a king? Are you not a king? Is Samuel not just an ordinary prophet? Why should we allow a man to just be holding you? You see that people are killing us. The people are fighting. Now, when I look at that, it seems to me that maybe Saul has another person that he's depending on. And just uh, before Samuel came, because he knew that he knew that he, he needed to do a sacrifice so that God can be at peace with him, so that God can fight the battle. And he said to Samuel, he said, because of the people, the people pushed me, and they pushed him out of his kingship. That is some of the challenges. And for us, we are living among men. And there is God. And because we are Christian, we live among men. There is that tendency, that temptation every time that you want to please men. Even though you know there are things that is, is against God. But because there are men is there, men are around, they didn't understand. Once it was only Saul that Samuel gave the information to. And I want you to know that this message you are hearing, you don't know maybe the person beside you is hearing. You. So I'm only counting on you that you are hearing. And you see several as well in the book of Revelation, when God gave the message to the church. Do you know what normally used to hand? Let him that have. So that means that some people that they are hearing, they don't have ears. Let him that have ear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So it was somewhere, it was Saul that somewhere told. Not the people. So I want you to know that this message, the way you are understanding it, other people may not understand it like that. Hold on to that that you understand. Hold on to it so that men will not push you. And those men that push Saul, it was not intentional. And I want you to know that every godly child of God, because they are all children of God, will not intentionally push you to sin. They will not. But in their carelessness or in their effort to help you, Jesus gave the disciples and told them and said, This, look at me, and I'm going to die, and I will rise up again. In Matthew chapter 16, what did Peter did? Peter took him up and said, You are never. You are not going to die. But thank God for Jesus. He understood. He knew that Peter is a man. So even if what I was a prophet, I'm showing you that there is no man that enemy will not want to use. Even if it was the will and the plan of God for Jesus to die and to rise again. But because it was useful to them, they are, they are now selfish. They are not looking at God's side. They are looking at what is going to pay them, what's going to, uh, what, what will encourage them, what will profit them. They are not looking at what will profit God. And that is common to all men. When you come into their life, you are in a place, we all look first before we start, unless God has dealt so much with you. We all look primarily first to what we want to gain from your life. Not what God wants to gain. It's not what God wants to gain. So Peter looked at him and they began to rebuke him. I said, you will not die, but Jesus took him and said, get behind me. What? Satan. Get behind me, Matthew chapter 6. Get behind me, Satan. Now, who is that Satan? Peter. He said, get, so any man that will not allow you to fulfill the plan and the will of God, where should they be? Let them be behind you. They want you to please them. But Enoch, and it was in Bible study that I was showing you more about. You need to be coming to Bible study. Please. You know, if they are telling me how many church members do we have, it is the number in the Bible study that I will give. It's not this number. So you should know that most of the time I'm not counting you. I mean, because if we have this number, this number is even, many people did not come to church today. But if I, we have this number, and in Bible study, I have 10%, even 10%, maybe 5% of this. So, and God is here, how many church members you have? And I don't know the day God will come. 
to ask. So it's better I go with the minimum that I know will not uh, at least the people that is coming to Bible study. So please begin to come to Bible study. Begin to come to Bible study. Even though I know that all the people that are coming to Bible study, all of us also may not be serious, but at least they are hearing the word of God. So I know that if you are serious, and well, let me move on in one of my topics today. You will have one day that you will say, ah, ah, I've not gone to Bible study for three months. Give me. Either you will take a skill, you will take vacation, or you will lose money. If you sincerely work to go to heaven, you will create that time. You will create that time. It's not, you will create that time. I know. Because all of us are men, we are women. And we are women. So and we have worked in this country before. I know. I know when the love of God is, is already draining, draining my heart. I know, and one of the areas is when I miss the prayer meeting, I miss the Bible studies, and I felt I can do on my own, and I can do Bible study more than many of you on my own. But I know when I miss the community, the general, the church Bible study, something is going little by little. There are some battles, there are some things you will not understand on your own. There are some battles you will not understand on your own. There are an environment that you have been going but when you come into this environment without prayer, that devil just sees somebody that has that anointing and it departs. You we, we do not even know. You will just discover why this thing happened. There are some danger that are being ahead of you. When you come like that, God will just give that word. You don't have that gift. And that's why you need to do everything possible, especially the word of God. Especially the word of God. I know the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So Enoch walked with God. But, and he was not. But before he, he, he was not, he had a testimony. And the testimony is, he pleased the Lord. So live to please God, not to please men. Live to please God. Sometimes it's not even to please yourself. To please God. And the Lord will give all that grace. To please him all the time in the name of Jesus. So I'm moving forward this morning again to just talk on those lifestyle. You know, those lifestyle in view of his coming. The kind of lifestyle that we should have. And we saw in this parable, so many of them, but I want to just speak few of them. One particular in this Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 36. Then Jesus sent away the multitude and went into the house, and a disciple came unto him. The first lifestyle come out of the multitude. Come out of the multitude. You want to walk in view of his coming. You cannot walk in view of his coming in the midst of the multitude. You saw Jesus when he wanted to talk about the matter of the kingdom. He sent away the multitude. Don't be part of the people that God will send away. He knew that this one, they have, they, he will just be wasting his time. He knew that they had no value for eternity. Now, when he sent away the multitude and he went into the house, you, you, I think you can help me bring that scripture. Matthew 13, verse 36. Matthew 13, 36, I, I, I just want to show you. Let, let's wait the media, we put, we put it there. Matthew 13, verse 36. Now, when Jesus put away the multitude, you will see what happens next. Now, because you cannot be in the middle, in the midst of multitude, and you want to please God. You cannot be in the midst of multitude, and you want to walk in view of eternity. You, it is not going to work Okay, if they are not, can somebody read for me in the congregation? Um, thank God for the, for the, okay, thank God for the media, God bless you. And um, I even want to apologize to the media. When I was appreciating people, I, I didn't mention your name. And I know that you have, please help me appreciate the media, I know. And you know they can, they can actually st stop me from preaching now. And apart from that, they are very wonderful people and I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for, you know, even when people are not around, when we do our money 
program, they have to do a lot of things to make sure we project it. The Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Now, then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. What happened? And his disciples came unto him. Multitude, when they were sending away, why did they say, ah, please, oh, me also, don't send me away, oh. Why did they not come back and say, Jesus did not invite them? That is the attitude of disciples. They came to him. And what did they say? Say, declare, no, no, don't remove it yet, please. Declare to us, show us, preach to us the parable of the tears in the feet. Don't you talk in parable, you know? To every multitude, the word of God is in parable. That is the general level. Now you cannot be on the general surface, general level, and you are still looking at heaven. It's not going to, you, it's not going to work. They have to come. He, Jesus spoke the parable to general public. All of them. And that is what I told you. Do you know the disciples, the people that came? Do you know what they ask Jesus to do for them now? Declare. Where do we declare that kind of thing? In the Bible study and Sunday school. That is the people, you know, now all of you now we are on the level of multitude. But when we go into our house, I will see people that will come back and said, we want to know more. That is, that is how you will know. There will be, even when you come back from work, you are tired. Your heart is in the place. I want to know more. We want to know more. Declare to us. This thing, an imparable, you are not able to speak so many things. So, come out of the multitude. Come out of the multitude. Matthew chapter 5, the Bible said that Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, Jesus, when he saw the multitude, is the same attitude. He went to the mountain. He said, no, let's see people that are serious. Now, first one. Seeing the multitude, he did what? He went into their midst. He went up into a mountain. And when he was set, what happened again? That is the attitude. Have that attitude that you know that multitude can come to church on Sunday. But disciples are the ones that return for Bible studies. Multitude can come during the service. Disciples that come for the Sunday schools. The disciples that will come. Let them come. Let us put this my meeting on the mountain. You know mountain, what mountain do? What does the mountain normally do? It's a hindrance. If you are walking on a level ground and you meet a mountain, is it the same way you will walk? You will need what? Extra effort. It's either you go and get ladder or you go and get something. So it's not just general. So it's the disciple that will now say, ah, no matter where the word of God is, I will get there. It's the disciples that will see a book and say, ah, this book, I need to get it. If I'm going to pay for it, I will get it. This message, if I'm going to pay for it, I will get it. I know I'm not supporting people that um, put money on church things. You know, you want to do conference, you have to put money. You want to do things like this, anything you want to do. Even if it's ordinary training, they have to put money. Even some people that put their general overseer when they come to the town, they say, well, our father is coming for you to see our father. You need to pay $100, you need to pay $200. I don't support it, but I've concluded in my heart that is the level they understand. But because me, I'm looking for that. If because of that, I will pay. I pay for conferences, so even though I, we don't charge conferences, we don't put money here. But when I see some conferences, some meetings that I know that is going to bless me, I will pay. Even though I may not like that lifestyle, that is what they understand. That is the level they understand. And I don't condemn them, I only pray for them. And anywhere I have, I'm able to influence, do my little influence. And God is helping me. I know some meet even we have in this our home place that we normally tag money and they make me one time to be the coordinator. And it was a surprise to them. Today, that meeting is no longer being put on registration. It was surprised to the fact that people will not be able to pay, people will not be able to come. 
But because we have seen it here, I know that when you love God, if the relationship is ten dollars and my brother cannot pay, I can pay for my brother. Nobody will feel ashamed. So, but because you desire something, you will go for it. You will not let that mountain. Mountain is to shut away the multitude. Mountain is to shut away the multitude. And sometimes it could be mountain of, of bees. That you see that we have a meeting and the enemy just put a mountain there. And the mountain is that you have to pay a lot of bees. Now there's an overtime. How will you overcome this mountain? Sir, you need the overtime. <laughs> so the multitude went for the overtime. But the disciples said, we climbed the mountain. We meet Jesus and the mountain. We meet him. We will not allow the mountain. Some of us do not know sometimes. Devil use that to hinder us. Devil use it to let you see the mountain. What Jesus wants you to see, to see him. But the disciples, they will see the mountain. They see the obstruction. They see the hindrance. And they are not able to move on. I pray that God will help us. You will come out of the multitude in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not allow the multitude to hinder you. Come out. So any area you are that you find yourself among the multitude, this morning come out in the name of Jesus Christ. But the multitude, they love bread. They love bread. Bread. They only love what they eat. What they want to eat. In John chapter 6, verse 26, you can write it down. The Bible says that Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves before because you eat. Some people will not come to church if there is, church is not going to make provision for what they will eat. If church is not going to give them this, God is not going, they are not going to do this to them. Now that is multitude. That is multitude. They love bread. They love what to eat. Some people will not come to meeting if the meeting is not centered on what you want to eat, what you want to wear. That's why most times the prayer meeting you see Many of you are many of you that attend some prayer meeting like that. They do not allow you to focus on heaven. Wait any prayer meeting you attend, any prophet, any prophecy, any pastor, look at the message. If the message is less than half of message that focuses you in heaven, that's not where you should concentrate yourself. That's not where you should concentrate your life. If it, even that is even the minimum that I put you, that is less than half. They talk so much now at the end of the thing. They now talk about, oh, okay, who is going to give his life to Christ now? You know, because if you don't get your, give your life to Christ, you will not get this bread, you will not get this miracle. That kind of place is occasional, is occasional meeting, occasional messages. Messages that will focus you more about heaven is message of eternity. It is what you will be listening to. But Jesus said, you seek me not. It's because of the bread that you eat. So, and multitude, they love miracles. You just want to come because of miracles. When a man of God comes to the heart, to the town now, they, are, they, follow, they follow them. They run to the place because there's one miracle or there's this miracle or there's that. And they forget that your miracle is actually in your house. Where you have God that planted a miracle for you in the place. You just need to be faithful and be committed and you will see that your miracle will get to you. One other thing about the multitude, multitude love the world. Multitude, they love the world. They love the world. They remain in their company even when they follow Jesus. They remain to be in the, in the world. When Jesus went to the mountain, the disciples came, but it's the multitude remain. They love to be part of the world. They love to be part of the world. I pray that your love for the world and for the things of the world, we die today in Jesus' name. That love for the world, we die in the name of Jesus. Now in Matthew chapter 13, verse 36, let me continue. Uh, 44. Jesus gave a parable, and this well I will stop and pick the next time. Again, Jesus began to talk about the kingdom of heaven. Say again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. A treasure that is hidden in a field. That which when a man had found, he hid it. 
and for joy thereof, he go and sell all that he had and buy that feed. The lifestyle that we should have is to make the kingdom a treasure. Treasure the kingdom. Treasure what belongs to the kingdom. The Bible said, when a man finds that treasure, the word of God, the kingdom of God has not become a treasure to many of us. And that's why, you know, you are not really, you are, you are, you are, you are not really focusing on eternity. You know, the Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart is. Some of us know our bank, your money now, your balance in your bank. Let's assume that somebody by mistake or by something, the money is all reduced. You just go around, $1,000 get out of your account. Do you know what will happen? Even while you are sitting down, you will, you will see what? Alert. And I'm telling you, somebody will not listen. Now, if that happens, <laughs> a thousand? Huh? What, what happened? I went to Texas, I think it was in Nogos, and I don't know what happened. I used my card in the airport before I bought the plane. By the time I'm landing, I receive a message from the bank and said, um, we suspect this um, uh, money that was taken from your account. Huh? And I said, no, I just said, I, 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 did, I know that I didn't spend that money. I said, no, I didn't approve it. So later on, when I get back home, I was looking at the account. I discovered that the card that they use, my card is in my hand. And there is another card that they use, and it attached to my name, and attached to my bank in this country. You know, I just look at it if I want to, because I don't know how that happened. My bank will not even explain it. I said, my card is here. The number you said, because I didn't look at that number. Someone they mentioned my name and said my card. I know I just used my card now. I just said no. Let I just look at it. I look at the card. It's not the same card. You know, I quickly said no. Why? Because there's money there. <laughs> <laughs> now, if your heart is only in the threshold of this world, if your heart is only the treasure of this world, that is how you will miss heaven. That's how you will not focus on heaven. But let's say that your my heart, the way my heart is there, I have you have so many things that can give you a lot. That is what I'm trying to say. So many things that will alert you when your body is doing somehow, when your life is going on the other side, when there is a, a fraud on your journey to eternity, somebody will quickly alert you. Ah, what are you doing? Probably you are talking with somebody. And you wrote, you told a lie that we've been an alarm that will ring in your brain. Bang, 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 bang. What do you say? I say, ah, I'm sorry. I reverse it. I don't know, maybe somebody's getting me. That is just because that is where your treasure is. You want to go to heaven. And maybe you look at somebody somehow. It's very for us as men. You look at one beautiful lady, and your heart is already calculating. Your heart is already naked, that woman. Ah. You say, God, there's an alert. This one is taking me to hell. Quickly, God help me. God help me. I disapprove. I disapprove. Immediately. Let that be removed from your account immediately. From your heart. That is what we are saying. Maybe your husband will not be able to buy something for you. And uh, you just see a man. Free of charge. He's just giving it to you. He's not saying anything yet. So he's giving it to you. Send this to you. And you are hiding it from your husband. Um, and nothing is alerting you. That you are on the way to. That's what we are saying. Where your treasure is, your heart will be there. This man find this kingdom is a treasure. So let the kingdom of God be the treasure. Be a treasure. Treasure it. Value it. That is the way to live for eternity. Let it be that is where your treasure is. If you get a job. And you see any dot, anything that is not going to be altogether a matter of the kingdom. Hmm, you say, no, I remove myself from this. I disapprove it. Because the heaven is asking you, do you approve this? Before we put your name on it, or you disapprove it. They are asking you that before you say a word. You want to speak to your husband? You want to speak to your wife? You want to speak to... Before you say that word, probably maybe that word, come out. Heaven will give you a benefit or doubt. Remy, that word you spoke, do you approve it? 
or you disapprove it before we put it in your account, what should you do immediately? I disapprove it. I repent. I'm sorry, Lord. That is the way to live for eternity. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise as we just pray. As we just pray, I only give us two points. I still have a few more of them. We talk about those later. But now, those two we talk about. The matter of treasure and the matter of a multitude. Just pray for yourself. That God deliver my heart from the multitude. Deliver my heart, deliver my passion from multitude. Take me away, and also you yourself can take yourself away. Let me not become a multitude. If you are a multitude already, come out of the multitude. Come out, come out. You don't have time for God, no time for the word of God. You do like the way the world are doing. You just love miracles, you know, you just love bread. You, that is what you just love. Ask God and say, Lord, help me. Do you treasure do you treasure the kingdom matter? Do you treasure this kingdom, the righteousness the, of, of, the, of the kingdom? Do you treasure it? Does this lifestyle of the kingdom, does it really matter to you? Do you value it? When you do something that is wrong, and even your conscience is saying this is wrong, you just let the conscience die. Is your conscience dead? Ask God to quicken it. Ask God to help you. Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. Receive grace to walk to walk perfect before him. To walk on the way to heaven. To walk the way that will help you to end well. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Pray. Pray that God will help you. Let's pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, help me. If you have found yourself in any manner, in any way, that you know God cannot help you to move on in heaven. Get out of that way. Repent from that way. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse you. Ask God to strengthen you. If you have been weak, ask God. Maybe you are not. Maybe you are not point. You are not point that become weakened. It has become weak. You don't even have anything that is alerting you. Nothing alerting you. Part of the people that can alert you are people that are, that are Christian. You are not working with people that can alert you, that can give you an alert again. You move away from Christian friends. You are moving now into the world. When you begin to look at your friends now, there are people that they don't value God. People that they don't value. No, you need to change them. Change those friends that are not valuing God. Change those friends before they change you. Change them. The Bible says that see a man that is not walking with the, in the, with the, with the ungodly. He's not sitting with his, with his comfort. He will be fruitful. That kind of man will be fruitful. So do not sit with that man that is, that is ungodly. Do not stand in the midst of sinners. Now, maybe you are finding yourself in the midst of sinners, in the midst of scornful, people that God is not valuable in their eyes. You need to come out. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, we thank you again. I pray, Father, for myself, for my brethren. Lord, that your grace, your grace, more of your grace will be poured upon us in the name of Jesus, that we continue to walk, Lord, eternity, we continuously be our focus in the name of Jesus. The sanity that have removed eternity from our focus, Lord, refocus us, refocus us in the name of Jesus. As men of all that have mingled with the world, mingled with the multitude, separate us from the multitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of all that are pleasing men instead of pleasing you, I pray, Father, Lord, give us grace to be able to stand for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, afresh, Lord, let eternity, let it be a treasure in our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for us men that have already lost that treasure. If you are know that you have lost that treasure, you have lost that eternity. As I'm praying this, Father, one, just lift up your hands. You know you are bastard there. Maybe you are here watching me or you are online. You know you yourself know you have just lost you have lost that consciousness of heaven. Lord, I pray that many, Lord, that have lost this treasure of heaven, restore them back. Bring them back by your power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Um.